Today we have the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. This is the Subaru that is ready to tango. I'm gonna give you a quick look at this Outback Wilderness. It's the most adventure ready Subaru Outback you have seen that is stock. So first of all, this is my first Subaru video. If you wanna see more Subaru videos, be sure to leave a comment below so I can get access to some. But right up front, you're gonna have these really big cladded bumpers. So I mean, these are gonna be ready to bump and scrape into anything so you don't have to worry about paint. You've got the LED daytime running light and headlight. And you've got the fog lights down below, which actually kind of have a cool design to them. And you've got the trim right here that you'll see in different parts of the vehicle. You also have this matte graphic on the hood, which is supposed to be anti-glare. You know, so when you're off-roading and out ready to go. This is the geyser blue paint, and you're gonna have a Subaru Wilderness badge right there, some big cladding over the wheels. You actually get small 17-inch wheels, which is great because you've got these Yokohama all-terrain tires so this is ready to go with these smaller wheels the cladding at the bottom like the accent piece with the outback label there as well but these wheels and tires should be ready to go up on top you even have an impressive roof rail. so you've got these uh, uh, specially designed roof rails that can actually support a rooftop tent if you're stationary so you could literally camp out up on top of those roof rails they are rugged enough and this is only 191 inches long, so it's a wagon and it's large inside, but it's not super big like some big SUVs. And ground clearance is actually nine and a half inches, which is awesome with good approach and departure angles. And Subaru is gonna give you some LED aspects of the taillight, but you've got a incandescent turn signal, but you still have this durable looking bump, something that can take a beating and not worry about getting scratched. Now for the cargo area, we get a power lift gate here lifts up on its own you still have a grab handle and there's led light right here which could be great for your cargo but also for camping if you're going to have anything back here or stuff in the back so subaru thought about that aspect of everything and i love that they have a little storage area right there a 12 volt power outlet these fold out hooks right here which are pretty awesome you've got a spot for a cargo cover as well you pretty much have the same setup on this side and overall storage space is good as you can see, it's nice and wide and fairly long. One nice thing that you don't always see in SUVs or other vehicles like this, you can pull that down. You've got a pull lever for both sides. So you've got a 40-60 split. I wish Subaru would give us a 40-20-40 just for some extra utility of a middle fold, but you've got some really good space back here and it's definitely big enough to maybe possibly camp. But like I said, the roof rails can support a tent. Subaru is going to give you the smart key system where you've got these lines to lock it and then the sensor in the back to unlock it. And over on the door, Subaru is not shy with material. So you've got a huge panel of soft material right here. I like this wilderness tag right there. A soft armrest, some unique trim pieces around here and enough for a bottle storage. The front seats are also very durable feeling and easy to clean. So if you actually get muddy and get dirty, these are not real leather. They're a synthetic material, but I like the pattern on here you've got this little cushion down here and some big soft bolsters up here so these actually look pretty cool and then adjustments it's your basic you've got two-way lumbar support you've got uh, front seat tilt height adjustment no four-way lumbar support though steering wheels manual tilt and telescoping you've got leather wrapped and you've got the same kind of trim design like you see in other parts of the car and sitting in the front seat of this Subaru, the headrests are not annoyingly intrusive. These seats have really nice bolstering around them, so space is actually pretty good overall. They're heated, but they're not ventilated. Let's take a look at the back seat. Subaru gives you the same kind of soft material here and soft armrest with storage, and you get the same synthetic material on these back seats as well. Plus the center folding armrest, and let's check out the legroom. So sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I've got good foot space and good knee space. So plenty of space overall. You've got air conditioning vents, heated seats, two tier heated seats, and two fast charging USB ports. And I can sit up tall without my head touching. So even though you don't have a big tall SUV, this wagon has plenty of headroom inside. And these seats don't scoot forward and backwards, but there's a little lever next to your side. You can recline and get more comfortable. All right, now hopping into this Outback Wilderness, you're gonna see some of the different little trim pieces in here that are gonna distinguish it from some other Outbacks. But you've got a mix of hard materials up here, soft materials here. I definitely like this little storage area. There's some practicality in here, 
but some that could be a little bit better too. So this is a leather wrapped steering wheel right here, as you can see, it's pretty comfortable to hang on to. Your controls for your information display are down there and it's a small display, but it's easy to read. You've got the physical gauges and then the digital display in the middle, which can be customized a little bit, but there's not a ton of information or anything extravagant in here. You got little paddle shifters on the side here as well. And then moving over here, you've got a larger display. So I have Apple CarPlay plugged in and I like how it actually takes up this part of the screen. It's vertical. It's not just a small horizontal section. So it's a pretty large overall screen right here. We've got 11.6 inches of touchscreen. Your X mode is enhanced here as well. So you've got X mode and it's actually physically on the screen right here. You can change through a few different pages. This is our home screen. The infotainment is definitely not perfect and I've got limited time with this, but your controls for your climate controls are down here. And even though it's touchscreen, there's shortcuts and physical buttons to different things. So you can pop up your driver's seat, heating right there your fan speed can easily be adjusted just by touching the screen so it's not perfect but you got temperature controls here for you and your passenger and you still get a volume knob and a tuning knob we don't have any special surround vision camera here but we've got dynamic lines it'd be kind of cool to have this uh, surround view camera for off-roading but we don't get it you've got a couple usb ports down there an auxiliary port parking brake which is electric and then this is an interesting storage area it just kind of swoops down um, it's a little bit interesting. Even though we don't have a surround view camera, we have this button that we can push to view right in front of the vehicle. So at least you have that when you're approaching obstacles, which could be very helpful. Otherwise, the shifter is pretty simplified right there. The center stack isn't the best use of space in my opinion, but these cup holders are good size. You have one that's a little bit raised and one that's lowered. And then, like I said, you've got a nice storage area in the dash right over there. Right here, you've got a soft armrest. You've got two tiered storage. So you've got this one, then you can lift up the other side and you've got a 12 volt power outlet inside of here. There's an automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls. And then we've got a sunglass holder, LED interior lighting, and then just a normal sized sunroof, no panoramic roof in this one. Now under the hood, as expected, Subaru is gonna give you their symmetrical all wheel drive system standard, and you're gonna get their turbo four cylinder boxer engine here instead of a regular naturally aspirated engine. This direct injected turbo boxer four cylinder is going to give you 260 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, and it is paired with the CVT transmission, but it's supposed to be revised for better gearing at low speed climbing for this wilderness model. And Subaru knows that this is an adventure type of vehicle, so it's ready to tow 3,500 pounds maximum towing. Not quite as much as some midsize SUVs at 5,000, but at least you still have 3,500 pound capability, which could haul quite a bit of things around. All right, y'all, we are getting on the road in this Outback Wilderness, and this is my first time driving this Subaru. So if you wanna see more Subaru videos with my full detailed reviews, night videos, things like that, be sure to leave a thumbs up because that would help me out in getting access to some Subaru vehicles. All right, now first impressions in this Outback is that just in my limited time in here so far, it's felt pretty smooth the ride comfort has been good so even though you've got a higher you know ground clearance you've got all-terrain tires it's not necessarily meant to be a comfortable cruiser but it is and my grandparents own a subaru outback and i totally understand why it's spacious it's it's uh, comfortable and it's just easy to live with and they live in the mountains all-wheel drive what else could you ask for here so I can hear some wind noise. I don't have my decibel meter in my same roads to test that out, but there's a little bit of wind noise seeping in here. But the ride comfort seems to be pretty good, even though there's a little bit of jitteriness with it. This has Subaru EyeSight, so the adaptive cruise control, the lane system uh, standard on here. So you can see all of that in the display down below. But with this turbo four cylinder, let's go ahead and punch it. And it's got good pull and this has a CVT, but so far it hasn't felt like most CVTs, but I haven't been able to drive it that much yet. The overall handling characteristics of this feel just fine. Even for, for being an off-roader, you know, for being dedicated for off-road with this wilderness month one, it seems to drive fine. There's a little bit of body lean in here, but nothing terrible. But this, uh, with this turbo, 
the CBT kind of mimics some shifts there and it's been responsive. So as soon as I pretty much put that down, put the pedal down a little bit, you get the early torque. And the big benefit to this turbo is gonna be those of you that go through high elevations, the turbo is gonna outperform the naturally aspirated engines very easily, especially with that low end torque, the forced induction. I wish this interior was a little bit more modern, but I like the storage area there. I like this screen, even though it's not the most updated uh, version of things compared to some vehicles. It just works. And ride comfort is pretty good. You know, I haven't been able to spend a ton of time on here. I've seen some people off-roading this, and it has seemed to be pretty impressive because you've got great ground clearance. You've got good approach and departure angles, and it's just ready to go off-road. I'm excited and hopefully I can get access to a Subaru later on for a full review, but what do you think of the wilderness aspect of this? I love the ground clearance, I love the cladding on here, just for its own type of Subaru Outback. You're covered to go off-road. Now here's a question, would you take this over a regular Outback or over a Forester? I'd love to know. You've got good space in here, you've got a powerful engine for the most part powerful enough for this size of a vehicle you've got the Subaru eyesight you've got the off-road readiness the tires the suspension the ground clearance everything but I hope you enjoyed this quick look and review of this Subaru Outback Wilderness leave your thoughts down below subscribe for more videos and we'll catch you next time